sometimes there's a knife that comes along and you kind of think to yourself, do I need another variation of this? And you come to the conclusion that, yeah, maybe you do. Maybe you do. Anyways, everybody, let's talk blades because that's what we're into. Today, I got for you guys another Spyderco, but not just any Spyderco. It's a Spyderco Shaman. Blacked out with serrations. So, here it is. Shaman, serrated, the BK for black. Before, before we get into this... I'm going to show you guys the original Shaman. Now here it is. Now when I first got this knife, I have to admit, I thought that this was a fake. I uh, I was pretty <laughs> convinced that this was a fake Spyderco. But I have seen a couple of friends who actually had this same exact knife. Um, and it's the same thing. So they're all real. And I even emailed and contacted Spyderco and... Got the confirmation that it is a real, genuine shaman. Now, the thing that really drove me to get this knife was because of uh, what it's designed for. It's designed for heavy use. So this is basically Spartaco's attempt at making... I don't know if I want to say a cold steel type knife, but a knife that can take one hell of a beating and kind of survive it. So this kind of, you know, going outside of the realm of their normal line of uh, construction, I want to say. Uh, Sal made it pretty clear that he wanted to design this knife for, for harder use, you know, harder than your average use. And uh, there's a video of that on the internet, um, on YouTube, if you want to look that up. So I thought that was really cool, and I thought that was something that I would really like in my collection, so I purchased this knife. Now, it sat around for a little bit. I carried it for, ooh, jeez. Carried it for a couple weeks, and I just found it kind of wide and heavy in the pocket, so it didn't really see too much pocket time, but I really do enjoy this knife very, very much. So, so much so that I actually fought myself. I really didn't know which one I wanted. They had two different styles. They had this, and the same one, just with the spidey edge serrations. And uh, I didn't know which one to pick. So I kind of opt out on the Spyderco serrations, um... I just chose to get a plain Jane, <laughs> regular shaman, and uh, I was kind of debating on whether or not to come back and get that other one, but I was like, nah, it's going to be too much, too much alike, and I didn't want to do that, so kind of fell to the wayside, and I was a little sad, but, you know, it is what it is. Got to love that compression lock. Uh, this knife, I didn't do any tuning to this knife, so this knife is still very sticky, it doesn't have that drop shut, you know, satisfactory kind of feel to it, but it's still a great Spyderco. And then this one came along. Now, before you get all, you know, worked up on what's in the box, well, you get the knife, obviously. It comes in that little plastic sleeve. Um, nothing else. You get the book and uh, this foam insert. So, you know, stuff that talks about the uh, Shaman and all of its... Awesome, good and happy glory. Nothing too crazy. And like I said, every now and again, every now and again, uh, with a certain type of Spyderco knife, you do end up getting a Spyderco sticker. Um, but what they like to do is they kind of like to hide it. So before you throw that box away, and if you dig knife stickers, um, next time you get a Spyderco, always kind of look out. Uh, if you get it in a red box like this, you might just have yourself a free little sticker. Just make sure that you lift up the books. Sometimes it's underneath the books. I don't know why they do that because it's so small. Someone can miss it and they throw it away the box. You know, that's kind of a, a loss right there. Uh, that's for you sticker guys. <laughs> I know I am. I got a ton of knife stickers and I absolutely love them. So, um, But sadly, not all Spyderco knife boxes uh, come with that. So certain ones uh, do... And it's kind of a gamble, really. So I get lucky. I probably got like two or three of them out of the ton of Spyderco knives that I actually have. So it's kind of random. But hey, it's cool stuff. Anyways, to this knife. So what really makes this knife really, really unique is the fact that it has serrations. So coming back to my want of the serrated shaman, I saw this and it was blacked out. So the hardware is all blacked out. The pocket clip, the screws... 
everything except for the actual um, lock here, the uh, locking mechanism, and the inside of the scales are not blacked out. And I know someone's going to be like, oh, well, it's supposed to be all blacked out. That is an eyesore. It's not that huge deal for me. I can totally manage with that. Plus, you know, it's you're going to see that not very much, so it's not going to really matter. And plus, you got all that. So, you know, it's it's fine with me. It looks absolutely great. Everything about this knife is fantastic. Oh. <laughs> Had a little pocket string in there. <laughs> if you saw that, it was underneath the the, uh, the pocket clip. So that's really cool. Um, you got that nice lanyard hole right there. And uh, it's got all that really, really nice stuff. Now, this is a very smooth drop shut kind of knife now the first one i just showed you doesn't do that it's it's all really really tight of course i can go and kind of you know back out on the uh on the pivot if i really wanted to make it nice and drop shut but it really doesn't matter that much it's not that huge of a deal it still functions and it works and it's fantastic so having this option of the serrated blacked out version alongside its original piece is a really really nice set so we'll get into the specs of this knife and, uh, you know, whatever you guys are curious about. Um, when you get this knife, though, I have to admit, it is kind of a heavier knife than what your normal Spydercos go for, but I'm sure you guys already know that. So the weight on this knife ooh, goes just a smidge over 5 ounces, so 5.18 ounces in the pocket. That's probably a, you know... A break it, make it or break it type thing to some people. Some people might like that. Some people might not. Some people might not care because I don't. You know, but hey, that's just me. So you're looking at three and a half inches of blade. Ah, a little bit more than three and a half. Three, three and five eighths inches with a three inch exactly. Three inch cutting edge. And an overall eight and one fourths exactly inches. And with just the handle, you know, all folded up in your pocket, you're looking at a little over, so uh, a little over four and a half, so four and five eighths of handle. Now, <laughs> I don't know. I think MXG Gear might have a deep carry pocket clip for the Shaman. I'm pretty sure they do, actually, now that I think about it. I was about to purchase one, but I thought, nah, nah the, po the Shaman doesn't really see too much pocket carry, but who knows? I might, I might actually... Yeah, I might actually do this, um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, I really do like that the pockets clips on the Shaman is different. It feels a little bit more heavy duty. It doesn't feel like their normal, typical Spartaco pocket clips. It feels just ever so slightly thicker, um, and it feels a little bit more rigid. It's just, you know, that's just me. But then again, it could be the placement of the screws. Um, this looks a little bit more... Because, you know, they just have the typical three. But this one's a little bit more up. You know what I mean? So it's got more of a stable kind of feel and look to it. But hey, um, I'm not going to complain too much about it. It's a fantastic knife all around. Um, we're going to get into the length. Sorry, I'm blabbering on here. Oh, wait, no, I did the length already. Goodness gracious. See, this is what happens when you're tired. All right, so... So the blade comes in at a 3.5 millimeters and the handle comes in at a 13.0 3.4 on the blade oh whatever um so yeah it's pretty it's a chunker <laughs> it's it's a chunker uh now you know to some people if you're looking for something of a heavy duty folder from spyderco this is your way to go um there's not too much to really say about the functionality of this knife. Cuts fantastic. Uh, the handle is slightly different in appearance. If you guys can, you might be able to see that. I don't know. Yeah, okay. This is much darker than this. This is kind of a lighter... It's almost like they got done contouring this handle but they didn't care too much if it kind of grayed out because of all the uh, uh contouring i guess all the uh shaving down they had to do for the g10 
This is more smoothed out, so it's not as gray. I mean, it's a, it's a subtle change, but I've noticed that this is kind of like a faded black, and this is more of a deeper black. And it's not, you know, I'm not counting the uh, the black hardware that's on here, so it's actually really nice. It, it kind of, it stands out in different ways to where it makes it seem like it's almost a completely different knife, but it's still the shame, the same, the shame. <laughs> it's still the shaman. It's still the same shape and the same size. And it's funny, um, Nick Shabazz calls it the shaman. Spiracle shaman. <laughs> I, I love Nick Shabazz. If you ever want to see um, good knife videos, go to that guy. Uh, I don't know him personally. I wish I did, but he's one of the knife guys that I enjoy watching. If I'm not, you know, doing videos myself and I'm trying to find more information on other knives I'm either purchasing or trading, he is one of the best. He really is. And I'm, I'm sure you guys know who Nick Shabazz is, but to me, um, I think he's a little bit better than uh, Nut and Fancy. I don't really care too much for Nut and Fancy. Uh, the guy kind of sounds slightly hypocr hypocritical when it comes to certain things, but I think we all do. I think I do sometimes. Um, I don't know. I, I really do like Nick Shabazz way more. I think he's probably one of my favorite knife YouTubers that I go to for, for a lot of my uh, my references. Um, funny guy. I love his voice. It's very iconic. That guy is super iconic. And when I'm having a bad day and I'm just trying to find out a little bit more about stuff, he really does cover a lot of good points when it comes to uh, knife reviews. So I hope that my channel can someday grow to his heights. Um, me, I just do it for fun. I really, I really don't care. You know, I don't have cue cards. I mean, I used to. I, I don't have cue cards. I don't really talk too much. Uh, you know, I don't really get too in depth with stuff. I kind of, the reason why I do what I do the way I do it is because I want to sound a little bit more of just a regular guy. I don't want to be that know it all type of dude. I do share whatever information that I do know. I'm not holding back from you guys. I actually do share whatever I do know. And I do have brain farts a lot. I know I get <laughs> corrected on a lot of my videos, and I do appreciate that. Um, but, you know, from a standpoint, from a regular, just regular Joe Schmo like myself, it's it's pretty cool to uh, to do this. So that way I can be like, yeah, you know, I, I'm not one of those fancy guys that goes out there chopping down trees with a little knife just so I can entertain you guys. I mean, although I would like to do that if I ever actually am able to do it fund-wise. Um, but it's it's different when you, when you go from a standpoint of being a professional <laughs> with what you know about knives and um, just a regular guy. So... That's kind of what I wanted to aim for is being just that regular guy. Yeah, show and tell, of course. Everybody likes this, you know, everybody work. We all have our little stuff that we are interested in, right? I know a guy who's interested in ball caps. I don't know why he doesn't have a YouTube channel for it, but hey, that would be interesting, right? And slightly boring at the same time because they're just bottle caps. You can't really do anything with them. Um... You know, it's, I don't, I don't want to go. I'm, I feel like I'm getting off topic here. So anyways, these knives are fantastic. They are, you can tell, from this going to any type of comparison to Spartaco, like the Endura, it's a very, very, very rugged feeling knife. Weighs a little bit more, obviously. There is some skeletonization in there. It's not huge. If I can get my, there it is, my flashlight. There it is. All right, so... You see a little bit of skeletonizing right there. And on the opposite end, but it's not too, too much. You kind of see those three holes right there, and it stops. I don't know why they didn't go all the way up, but... It's on both shamans... Shamans, now I'm saying it. Shamans. Shamans? <laughs> Plural? <laughs> Without using the light, you can still kind of see it. But they are chunky knives. So if you like chunky knives, you got big chunky hands, you got sausage fingers, and you need something to really, really fill in those sausages. That's strange. I don't know if I should say that. Would YouTube not like that? Sausages. Anyways, <laughs> if you if you have big mitts, is that a better term? 
and you need a decent knife, this might actually work for you. Uh, these are pretty big. So you got that regular grip here, and without too much finger grouping, you got the jimping here, you got jimping here, so you can choke up, because it's made for that. You got that built-in choler right there. And it feels fantastic. And you got that extra reach if you have to, you know, scale down and regular grip it. It's fantastic. It really is. It, it does have a kind of a Native American type look to it. Because a lot of uh, knives or cutting instruments kind of have that shape and that kind of leaf shape kind of style with the, you know, it just looks the part. It really does. So I can totally see why they called it the shaman. Shaman. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it, the shaman, shaman, the <laughs> Spartaco shaman. <laughs> Damn you, Nick Shabazz, why do you got to be so awesome? <laughs> I'm just copying what he calls it. Um. So yeah, <laughs> you got the Spartaco logo here. You got the Spartaco CPM S30V. When you get this knife, if you get this knife, you're going to see that these are blacked out. So I'm using the light to kind of highlight those at little areas. You got Sal's insignia here. You got the Golden Colorado USA Earth there, and of course, it's the same exact thing on this side. So, on this on this knife, I should say. Excuse me. Good stuff. Very good stuff. Um, these knives are starting to get a little bit more expensive. I've noticed that the price has jumped up. When I first purchased this knife, it jumped up about a hundred bucks. So when I purchased this, it was around about two hundred. Now it's going for three. And this one, I believe it's close to 300 as well, like 275, 280 around ish. So these aren't really cheap knives, um, but they're very high quality. They're very rugged. They're very heavy duty, you know, not for little baby hands <laughs> kind of knives. Um, it's it's an awesome it's an awesome knife. I really do like it. I really do like how how they made the knife to where the spine is nice and thick, but it tapers down. It's just it's it's a slicer. It really is. It's a real real nice slicer. And the tip is really nice on there too. Don't go prying with these knives now. You hear? That would just you're going to ruin your knife. Darn it. Now, one thing I've noticed is that they sharpened one side on this and then on the other side. So, yeah. <laughs> I think they call that a... I want to say that it was a chisel grind. I know I said that in my last video when it was actually a saber grind on there. I had a little bit of a brain fart. I was a bit tired, so I totally forgot what I was talking about. But I know it's there. It's just, you know, not registering or... Sometimes I end up having, like I said, a brain fart. So happens to us all. We're all human, right? Yeah, yeah, say it. Lack of caffeine. Shut up. But you know what? If you're the type of person that's into these kind of knives, I'd go ahead and give it a look-see. Um, otherwise, they're going to be a little bit more harder to come by. I don't know why, but uh, last time I was looking at one of these, um, they were all sold out on Amazon. I couldn't find any on Blade HQ, but this was a time back, so I don't know what it's like now. But uh, I didn't realize how popular this knife was. Um, I've been moving this around in my collection since I've had Spydercos. This was probably one of the least ones that kept being, you know, out of my pocket. So having to see that it's actually pretty, it's pretty popular. I can say it's almost as popular as the PM2, and a lot of people might say that I'm wrong, <laughs> but that's just how I see it. I see that the PM2 and the Shaman are very, very, and of course the Native. I've uh, been trying to get a hold of a Native, but uh, we'll see, you know, time will tell. Um, I'm not really too huge on the smaller end knives, but uh, we'll see, we'll see. Um, I might get one, I might not. But, you know, they're, they're the type of knives that uh, kind of bring a smile to your face, if you get what I mean. So, Anyways, go ahead and slash that like button, stab that subscribe, slice that bell icon so you guys are notified anytime that I post new stuff and in these craziest of times. Everybody, please be kind, be safe, carry responsibly, and I'll see you all awesome people in the next video. Whoa. Oh, man, did you see that? 
Woo! Let's not do that again. <laughs>